Two important theories have been developed to explain the properties of acids, bases, and salts. These are the Arrhenius theory and the Bronsted-Lowry theory. Here we'll look at the Bronsted-Lowry theory. This theory of acids was proposed independently in 1923 by two people, Johann Nicholas Bronsted, a Danish chemist, and Thomas Martin Lowry, an English chemist. We'll introduce the main points of this theory. Before we do that, just a quick word here about a hydrogen atom. Its atomic number is one, so it has one proton. A neutral hydrogen atom also has one electron. It is known that over 99.98% of the hydrogen atoms on Earth contain no neutrons. So we'll state here that a hydrogen atom has no neutrons, which is nearly always the case. If one electron is removed from a hydrogen atom, it forms an H plus ion. Here's the equation showing that. A neutral H atom has one proton and one electron. So removing an electron will leave a charge of positive one, one proton, and zero electrons. So an H plus ion contains no electrons, no neutrons, and one proton. Therefore, an H plus ion is the same thing as one proton. Or we can say that H plus equals one proton. We use the terms H plus ion and proton interchangeably in chemistry 12. According to the Bronsted-Lowry theory, an acid is any species that donates a proton or H plus ion to another species. Let's look at an example of this. Let's start with a molecule of hydrogen chloride, HCl and a molecule of water, H2O. Here are the Lewis structures for these molecules. HCl is a polar molecule. There is a partial negative charge on the chlorine atom and a partial positive charge on the hydrogen atom, shown by the delta minus and delta plus. The water molecule is also polar. The oxygen atom has a partial negative charge, and each hydrogen atom has a partial positive charge. The negative charge on the oxygen pulls the partially positive hydrogen atom away from the chlorine. The hydrogen leaves its shared electron with the chlorine atom. The chlorine atom has gained an electron, so it acquires a negative charge and becomes a Cl- ion. The hydrogen atom lost an electron, so it acquires a positive charge, forming an H plus ion, which is also called a proton. The proton moves to the water molecule and attaches to one of the lone pairs. Instead of staying with the hydrogen atom, the positive charge is considered as the charge of the whole ion, so we'll move it over here. There are now three H atoms attached to one O, so the formula is H3O instead of H2O. We'll draw square brackets around the H3O because it's an ion and write the positive charge here in the formula. Chemists call the H3O plus ion the hydronium ion. So we can summarize the whole process here. We started with a molecule of HCl, and we added a molecule of water, which gave us an H3O plus, or hydronium ion, plus a Cl minus, or chloride ion. We can now write an equation to show this process. We write HCl gas, plus H2O liquid forms H3O plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. We can also represent the process like this. This shows an H plus ion or proton is being transferred from the HCl molecule to the water molecule. So this is called a proton transfer. H2O has gained one proton so it forms an H3O plus ion. HCl has lost one proton, or H plus ion, so it forms a Cl minus ion. Because the HCl is losing, or donating a proton, according to the Bronsted-Lowry theory, it is called an acid. To indicate this, we often call it a Bronsted-Lowry acid, or Bronsted acid for short. According to the Bronsted-Lowry theory, a base is defined as any species that gains or accepts a proton, or H plus ion, from another species. Because the H2O is gaining or accepting a proton, it can be defined as a Bronsted-Lowry base, or Bronsted base for short. So in this reaction, HCl is an acid and water is a base. Because the reactants HCl and H2O are not ions, but the products H3O plus and Cl minus are ions, 
We call this process the ionization of HCl. Here's a question. We're asked to write the equations for the ionization of the following acids when they're added to water and to identify the acids and bases on the reactant side. We'll start the first reaction by adding liquid water as the other reactant. The formula for this compound starts with an H, so we assume it acts as an acid, and we'll label it as an acid. So the other reactant water must act as a base in this case. Now an acid is a proton donor, and a base is a proton acceptor. So that means a proton or H plus ion will be transferred from the acid HNO3 to the base H2O. So this means that water will gain an H+, plus, which is one H and one positive charge. Adding an H and one positive charge to water gives us H3O+, plus, the hydronium ion. The acid HNO3 has lost one H+, plus, which means it has lost one H and one positive charge. We remove the H atom from HNO3, giving us NO3. And taking away one positive charge is the same as adding one negative charge. So we have NO3 minus, the nitrate ion. Both of the new ions formed are aqueous. So this is the equation for the ionization of HNO3. HNO3 is the acid on the left side, and water is the base on the left side. Now we'll see what we get if we add HCN to water. Because HCN starts with H, we'll treat it as an acid, and H2O is a base. So there will be a proton transfer from HCN to H2O. The H2O will gain a proton, or H+, and form H3O+, or hydronium. And the HCN will lose a proton, or H+, and form Cn-. So this is the equation for the ionization of HCN. HCN is the acid on the left, and water is the base. A double arrow is used here because the ionization of HCN does not go to completion. In a solution of HCN, only a few molecules are ionized. You'll be shown how you can tell whether to use a single or double arrow later in the course. Now let's consider this reaction. Again, the double arrow here just tells us that this reaction does not go to completion. Instead, an equilibrium exists here. We see that the NH3 has been converted to NH4+. In doing so, it gains one H and one positive charge. Therefore, it gains one H+, or one proton. Because it gains a proton in this case, the NH3 is classified as a base. Looking at water, we see it has been converted to OH-. OH- has one less H and one less positive than H2O. Therefore, it has one less H plus than H2O. Therefore, when H2O converts to OH-, it loses an H plus or proton. For that reason, we identify H2O as an acid in this case. Now we'll look at a previous reaction we had in which HNO3 reacts with water. In this reaction, water acted as a base. So we can now see that, depending on what it's reacting with, water can play the role of an acid or the role of a base. Such a species is said to be amphiprotic. An amphiprotic species is one that can act either as an acid or as a base depending on what it's reacting with. Water is one amphiprotic substance. There are many more, as we shall see later in this unit. Monoprotic, diprotic, triprotic, and polyprotic acids. Consider these two acids, HCl and HNO3. Both of these are able to lose one proton only. An acid that has one proton available to donate is called a monoprotic acid. So both HCl and HNO3 are monoprotic acids. Now consider this acid, H2SO4. It's called sulfuric acid. Notice it has two H atoms at the beginning of the formula. Acids that have two protons they can donate are said to be diprotic. So H2SO4 is a diprotic acid. However, when diprotic acids like H2SO4 are added to water, they do not lose both of their protons at once. They do it in steps, losing one proton at a time. In the first step of the reaction of H2SO4 in water, the H2SO4 loses one proton to water. So the water is converted to H3O+, or hydronium. Because the H2SO4 is losing an H+, it means it's losing one H atom and one positive charge. 
This gives us HSO4 with a minus charge. HSO4 minus is called a hydrogen sulfate or bisulfate ion. Notice that HSO4 minus has one hydrogen it can lose. So in the second step of the ionization of sulfuric acid, the HSO4 minus will react with water and donate its proton to water, which would produce another hydronium ion. The HSO4 minus loses a proton, so it loses one hydrogen and one positive charge. So it will be left as SO4. And losing one positive charge will cause its charge to go down one, from negative one to negative two, or two minus. The product SO4 two minus, or sulfate ion, does not have any hydrogens to donate. So this is the last step in the ionization of sulfuric acid. The double arrow here implies that there is an equilibrium. This reaction does not go to completion. Whereas in the first step of the ionization of sulfuric acid, there is a single arrow, which means this step goes to completion. 100% of the sulfuric acid is converted to hydronium and hydrogen sulfate ions. Now we'll look at phosphoric acid. We see that it has three H's at the front of its formula, which means it has three protons it can lose. For that reason, phosphoric acid is called a triprotic acid. When it's combined with water, it doesn't lose all three protons at once, just one at a time. In the first step, one proton is transferred to a water molecule, so it produces one hydronium ion. Because it loses one H and one positive charge, the other product would have two H's and a charge of negative one. H2PO4- is called the dihydrogen phosphate ion. We see it still has two protons it can donate. In the second step, the H2PO4- ion loses one of its protons to water. So it produces another hydronium ion. And since this loses one H and one positive charge, the other product would be HPO4-2-. This product is called the monohydrogen phosphate ion we can see that it has one proton available to donate. So in the last step, the HPO4-2- donates a single proton to water, producing another hydronium ion. And because it loses one H and one positive charge, the final ion that it forms is just PO4-3-. This is simply called the phosphate ion. Polyprotic acid is just a general term for any acid that can donate more than one proton. Examples could be carbonic acid, which is diprotic, phosphoric acid, which is triprotic, and pyrophosphoric acid, which has four protons it can donate.